Welcome back to the weekend preview. Saturday's late kickoff sees Manchester United host Leicester at Old Trafford in one of the standout games of the match week. Well, this time last season, both Manchester United and Leicester had their sights set on Champions League football. But ahead of this meeting, it's only the home team that have an outside chance of finishing in the top four. They're currently sixth in the table, four points behind Arsenal, having played a game more. So a lot of work for Ralf Rangnick to do. Let's get his pre-match thoughts as well as those of Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, I think that's uh, very good news for the club, for the fans, the supporters. Uh, also for Bruno, I think, to know that uh, he will be here for the next five years, I suppose. Um, I mean, there's no doubt that he's a very important player for, for this club and for this team. And uh, as I said, that's, that's, that's great news. I already congratulated him yesterday when we saw each other after he, his return from the uh, uh, World Cup qualifier. And as we all know, he played well in the second game. I watched both games on TV and uh, scored the two most important goals to qualify for the World Cup. Well, what I know is they have absolutely top-class players. You know, they've got players that can uh, change the course of a game. We've, uh, maybe the last couple of seasons, our record's been good against Manchester United, but it counts for nothing. You, you really have to be really focused in the game. Uh, you have to play to the highest level, physically and tactically. And... Uh, and then you hope then your quality can come through. So, um, so yeah, they've got brilliant players, and uh, yeah, they're playing at home, so they want to uh, they want to win. But for us, we can really go and enjoy it. We know we have to play a physical game, be really aggressive with them without the ball, and uh, yeah, and we've shown in our last four occasions that we uh, we can do that well. Well, it should be a great game, but there is only one place to start with this. And as we have Leicester's former title-winning captain in the studio with us, we've got to talk about Leicester, Wes. What's happened this season? Why has it not gone to plan off the back of what was a great end to the season last year? Yeah, the last couple of seasons, you know, it's been really good, you know. Just missing out on top four, you know, it's been probably disappointing. But overall, the season's been, the uh, previous season's been really good. And this season's not quite happened Um yeah, I think there's been injuries to key players that has not helped. Um, and I think just general performance has not been where we expect it to be. And that reflects the position where or Leicester in the in the league at the moment. So, um, you know, I think under Brendan, he's got the capabilities to, you know, turn things around and, and get the best out of players. And um, this season, you know, he's not had his, his full strength squad, which I know has affected probably the whole overall you know, performance and position that Leicester are in. Uh, but on the positive, we've got players coming back now. Um, you know, it's good to see Wesley Fofana back um, and looking like he can, you know, finish off the season. And, and James Justin and Johnny Evans should be fit now. So um, a lot of players coming back. And I think for Leicester, finishing the season, you know, in a positive manner and trying to climb up to a you know, high position is, is what we can take now from this season. You're still involved with the club in an ambassadorial role, so you're in and around the King Power a fair bit. What, what's the mood like? How are the players feeling about how the season's gone? Is there a feeling of disappointment or are they feeling fairly positive about what they can still achieve this campaign? Yeah, you know, I think from the players' point of view, um, not really happy with how... how they are in the in the season and how probably just the uh, the position they're in currently. So uh, it, it's been a difficult one to speak to them about. Um, you know, uh, it's never a good place to be in when, when you're not performing too well. But um, I think you know, under Brendan and um, the staff, they always look at the positives and and try and remain um, in positive in that sense and. I think you know, the last couple of games we've shown better form. Um, definitely be encouraged by some of the players coming back, uh, some key players coming back. Mm. And um, I think for the remaining part of the season, just finishing strong and, and rebuilding for next season is, is their main focus. Yeah, give us an idea on, on where the focus lies in terms of competitions, because the Europa Conference League gives Leicester an opportunity to play European football again next season if they win it they go into the Europa League next season. Do you think that's their best opportunity of European football or can they still achieve it by 
by maybe finishing in those positions in the Premier League table? I think, you know, it's a tough, tough ask to finish. And uh, looking at the table, it's a very, very tough ask to, you know, see if they can break into that European spot. Um, nothing's impossible. That's a tough, tough ask, though. Uh, but in the Europa Conference League, you know, things are going well. Um, two tough games coming up against PSV and... Um, probably Brendan will be looking at those games as probably the way into Europe next season, which is um, you know a positive. And if we could add more silverware, you know that brings up the the whole morale of the, of the team also. So um, yeah, I know Brendan will be focusing more on that Europa game coming up. And um, yeah, yeah, I think during the season as well, or remaining part of the season, if you can just put in positive performances and. Uh, see how far they can get up that table uh, that's what you'll be looking at in the league When you see this fixture against Manchester United it must bring back some nice memories for you Wes because you scored an equalising goal against Manchester United that eventually led to your side winning the Premier League trophy in the most incredible of Premier League seasons Here it Yeah is. Um, just looking at it there you know memories come flooding back uh, and it was 1-0 down, so that was the equalising goal. And that point proved to be, you know, pivotal in his winning the league because, uh, yeah, um, Chelsea done a, a job against Tottenham um, during that midweek of that game game week. So, yeah, you know, fantastic memories. Um, you know, to score at Old Trafford is, is special in itself. But it, when it's um, a goal that gets your point to, to win the league and lifting that trophy, you know, it makes it extra special. You I still, I still can't believe that happened. I know. And it's like even, even watching that clip, it just, it feels like it, it's, it's bizarre. It just doesn't feel real still. I mean, I, I, even to win it must be a whole other feeling. But just to have witnessed it as, as journalists, as fans, mm. it's just amazing what happened. There were so many Leicester City shirts in America. <laughs> I lived there for 12 years and I'd never seen any Leicester shirts. No disrespect. But all of a sudden, they win the league and everyone's a Leicester City fan. <laughs> so, but it's fantastic. I also think, you know, to pick up on a point that Wes made, that Leicester's success has been so good, right, overachieving, mm. that I think sometimes people need to, someone said to me the other week, are Leicester where they're supposed to be? Because they've, they've won the FA Cup, you guys won the league. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you have to sometimes have a bit of a reality check and think, what, are the, what players do we have? Yes, they've had injuries. Because there were times this year where Brendan Rodgers was getting booed by a small percentage mm. of the crowd. And I'm thinking to myself, how is that possible? So sometimes I think teams can get a little bit, fans can get a bit carried away of where the team really should be. Mm. But I do think, I think Leicester missing out on the Champions League for two years in a row, I think it was almost like they'd been a little bit hungover from that because they were so close, wasn't they? And I love Brendan Rodgers. I think he's a brilliant manager, but, manager, but I think Leicester have actually overachieved mm. and maybe they are exactly where they're supposed to be right now. OK. Um, Leanne, should we talk about Manchester United? No, I was actually thinking, <laughs> how are you going to do me like that? Show him West scoring at Old Trafford, I was about to leave. <laughs> Look, you know, it's not been a happy season for you, Leanne. You've been here with us in the studio a fair few times and talked about all the problems at Manchester United. <laughs> no problems, no. <laughs> Let's focus on a positive, shall we? Because today there was big news, Bruno Fernandes signing a new contract, which takes until 2026. What do you make of the timing of that? See, I'm happy with that. I think a lot of Manchester United fans are questioning why now wait for the new manager to come in. But I think sometimes fans suffer with recentism. You know, when Bruno came in two years ago, he literally was the reason why we finished second in the league. Yeah. Look at these goals he's scoring. He's assist. He's third in, you know, goal scoring actions in the last two years. Mohamed Salah and I think Kevin De Bruyne or Harry Kane are only above him. So, yes, he's not performances this year haven't been as good as they were when he first came in. But for me... He's a main player at Manchester United. And just because he's gone for a spell of maybe, you know, not playing out of his skin doesn't mean that we shouldn't reward him. Five years, from, from what I hear, it is quite a long time, isn't it? But we don't want to find ourselves in the same situation as we have with Pogba and Jesse Lingard, where they're going to leave on a free. So, you know, look at these stats. I mean, they speak. I'm not really a big stat person, but at the same time, you've got to look at these stats. And I think Bruno is a fantastic player. And I think with other quality players around him, he will get even better because, for me, he's playing with players that are nowhere near the level of what he needs to be playing with. Yeah, you can't argue with those numbers, can you, Flo? Um, I, think that, I think what's interesting about the, the timing of this contract extension is that we still don't know who's going to be the permanent manager at Manchester United. Did you find that a bit curious? Yeah, I mean, often a lot of these deals are done way before they're announced and 
he is a key player, like Leanne said, for United. So I imagine you know this could have been signed a, a, a fair while ago, but they were lining up the announcement at the right time. And it's been a quiet week in men's football because it's been the international break. But around United at the moment, it is quite a positive place. They had record attendance for the women's game at Old Trafford last weekend. So I think there's a, actually quite a positive atmosphere at the moment, which is in contrast to what it's been like the previous few months. Mm. So I think it was a good timing to announce it now and say look you know for the fans we've got some more good news we've got a very key player signed down to a long-term deal and I don't think he's probably that worried because like Leanne said on a personal level he's actually playing really well he's one of the few players who is actually playing pretty well and he is achieving individually he probably just needs reassurances that the right players are going to come in the right coach is going to come in and I think United are still very attractive as a brand and I think as a manager you would want to go and, and lead that team because you know that there's a lot of money to spend there's ambition they want to return to where they once were so I think it's still attractive as a player and as a manager it's just about finding the right fit now they've spent so much money they have so many individual talents and actually, any manager is going to struggle really to patch that together and make sense of it almost. It's mm. just almost you've got too much to work with. Yeah, Bruno Fernandes' statement, he said the best is yet to come. And I think that's what the fans want to hear, Leanne. How do you view the rest of this season? Because they can't win a trophy now, Manchester United. So really, their focus will be on securing a Champions League spot. Do you still think they're in the, in the running for that? Or do you think they're going to have to settle for Europa League football? My, my head and my heart are telling me two different things, but I think it'll be Arsenal's to lose. You know, that game in hand, I think the form that Arsenal are in, Manchester United, you don't know what you're going to get on any given day. And it's weird for me to sit here and actually think that Leicester will probably beat us. Even though it's at Old Trafford, Brendan Rodgers said in his interview about it being at Old Trafford, but I don't think it's a fortress anymore. Mm. I think teams come there knowing we're there for the taking, and it's sad to say, but it's just a reality. So mm. I People still don't think, fear them like they no, used to. Right? they don't. We're almost better away from home. In a weird way. Remember, we went on that whole run of a whole season almost, I think, without, you know, losing away from home. So I don't think it's that full, it's still Old Trafford, arguably, one of the best stadiums in the world, best places to go. But I just think, you know, it, it's, it's so disappointing to sit here and think that we don't... I'm used to going into games thinking we're going to win every game from a Man United fan's perspective, but we have to be realistic. But I think Arsenal will come forth. That's just my opinion. OK, right. Before we move on and talk about West Ham against Everton, some other news to bring you. Last week, two new legends were inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame, Patrick Vieira and Wayne Rooney. Voting for who will join them closes this Sunday with six more players from the 25-man shortlist getting selected. So let's take a look at who you can pick from goalkeepers and defenders. There's a few standout names in there, including Tony Adams, Rio Ferdinand, Ashley Cole, John Terry, Nemanja Vidic. Then also in terms of the midfielders and forwards, another decent selection for you. I mean, they're, they're all worthy, really, aren't they? Sergio Aguero, Andrew Cole, Matt Letizia, Robin Van Persie, Yaya Toure. So Wayne Rooney was inducted last week, as I just mentioned, and he's been running his eye over these other nominations that will be decided by this weekend, ahead of the vote closing at nine o'clock UK time on Sunday.